Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to show you some wraparound retainer designs. This is a mock-up of a traditional wraparound retainer design that I came up with. This isn't a real case, it just shows some different features. The purpose of the wraparound retainer is to provide post-ortho treatment retention and minimize or eliminate the wires that cross over the occlusal, especially in the posterior clasping area, so that it allow the posterior teeth to settle in unencumbered. Now this is a an O3O retainer wire that wraps all the way around and it has auxiliary support wires. If it didn't have these wires, this wire would be real floppy because it's only an O3O retainer wire. Now the, o, the auxiliary support wires are usually thin and they'll usually go between the lateral and the cuspid, sometimes between the cuspid and the bicuspid. I've even seen them go between the centrals and the laterals. Usually you just try to find a space in the occlusion that's free to allow these wires to go through. The trouble with these is that they're usually thin so that they don't interfere with the occlusion and uh, they often break. And if they break then you've got that real floppy action of this wire. So um, this labial bow can either be straight across the buckle like that one and then it goes down uh, toward the gingival margin on the second molar to get like a c-clasp retentive value back here you can be fancy you can have it festooned like this this these auxiliary support wires they can be a single loop like that or they can wrap all the way around like this one and uh, typically you'll bend the loop and then slide it over the wire and if it's a zigzag anchor bend, you can just slide it over very easily. If it's a loop, you need to leave the loop open so you can slide it over and then you can close the loop if you like. So now I'm going to show you some designs of these, this basic um, wraparound retainer without the need of the auxiliary support wires. Here's a wraparound design that doesn't require wires crossing over the occlusal, not even auxiliary wires up here. It consists of two wires. One is a spring-tempered 036 wire. It's kind of a heavy wire for a labial bow. I mean, you could have a labial bow be 036 all the way around, but it would be pretty hard to adjust up here. And we've made those before. Some doctors like that. But this is just a regular retainer wire. It's an 030. You could use probably an 028 or 032, whatever. This one's an 030, and it's soldered to the 036. Now the 036 is like a circumferential class modif modified where it goes from the distal of the second molar up to the embrasure between the second bicuspid and the first molar. Now this is where the retention is. So I round this 036 wire off, I tuck it into the embrasure good and snugly so that it has a good retention value and then it comes around distal into the acrylic and then soldered to that is the 030 retainer wire. Now, I want to have this wire, this 036 wire, to be free as much as possible for adjustability. So I'm going to put my heat protective compound before I solder it up to like the border of the uh, middle third and the mesial third of the molar, right about there. So that way I have all of this free uh, to be adjusted. If I didn't do that, say I would just put it up here, well solder would run up here and there would be just a little stub of a piece of 036 sticking in there and it'd probably be all right but it just doesn't allow for much adjustability so I'm going to have it up to here uh, the heat protected compound so it'll stop the solder now if you have a laser welder or a puck this would be a great thing to use it on I don't have that so I'm going to be soldering and there has to be a really good solder joint so it doesn't break down so when you wear this because this is a spring hard tempered wire it's going to be very rigid it's going to hold this wire into place here it is finished. This particular one, the doctor wanted acrylic on the labial to cover the centrals and laterals. So that's going to give a good anterior retention, but that doesn't do anything for the posterior retention. Now notice uh, the rigidity of it. It's pretty rigid because of that um, hard tempered 036 wire back there. So we'll stick it on the model and it has going to have good retention up here because of the labial acrylic but the posterior retention is going to be in, held in place by these 
circumferential class tucked into the embrasures. Pretty good little retainer. Now, I said it didn't cross the occlusal. Well, it does between the second and third molars on this one side. It's only got third molars on that one side. But as you can see, when we put it in occlusion with the opposing, that that's a non-issue. Now here's a design that doesn't have auxiliary support wires. This has a heavy wire that comes out to the mesial of the first bicuspid and it has the 030 uh, retainer wire soldered to it. Now this is an 045. You could use an 040 if you like, but uh, this doctor wanted the 045. It's got Crozet clasps on the first molars. It's not totally free in the posterior. It does have the occlusal rests on the six-year molars, but other than that, the posteriors are free to settle in. But look how rigid this is because of that strong 045 wire. Okay, so there's a couple of designs of wraparound retainers that do not require the auxiliary support wires. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.